<laughs> All right, everybody. We're going to take it up a little bit. Oh, do I need these? No, I don't think I do. Um, strange not having a podium here. Um, oh, there I am over there. Okay. Got to read from the room. 500 people. But, <laughs> that's right. That's I'm like, whoa, I walked in. I'm like, holy crap. A lot of people here. Uh, and the bar's not open yet. Strange. Um, so... Uh, my name is Michael Lopp. I'm the VP of Product Engineering at Slack up there on Fifth and Howard next to that big Salesforce atrocity. Um, <laughs> sorry, Salesforce people. Um, we're going to talk about the product triangle. Uh, what I want to do before I say that is I'm going to click this and make sure my slides work. Yay! How many of you... This is where I worked. These are the logos. I've been collecting logos for some That logo on the end is not quite right. That's better. There we go. Um, how many remember Borland? Show of hands. All my people are here. Oh, sweet. Netscape, you heard of that? Okay, all right. That startup that you've never heard of, have you heard of that? Because I worked there. No? Okay. Palantir, mm. Pinterest, yay! And here we are at Slack. Um, been doing a lot of leadership, building a lot of product for the last three decades. It's been a hoot. I've learned some things. This is a 15-minute talk. I have to go fast. A uh, little bit more getting to know you here. Um, how many of you are engineers? Engineers, about 50%. Okay, product humans, raise your hands. Okay, this word here, TPM, is technical program manager. Uh, program manager types, raise your hand. Three? Wow. Hmm. How about like project managers? Zero. Oh, this is super interesting. Okay, um, here's another one. Extroverts, this is not going to be hard for you. Please raise your hands. Well, you leave them up there, extroverts. I know it's not tricky. Leave them up. Look around, everybody. Introverts, raise your hands. Thank, oh, sorry, me too. Thank you for that. I know it was tricky. Um, isn't it interesting, though? Isn't it interesting? I do this question every time I do a talk, and it's always majority introverts. And it's usually leadership stuff, which is super interesting to me. The introverts are doing something really interesting. So good job, introverts and extroverts. Um, I want to try... <laughs> How was that funny? Um, I want to talk a little bit about the product triangle here. So um, in these companies that I've been building for the last 20 years or so, we always have these con three constituencies here, engineering, product, and TBM. Actually, we don't always have them. Um, but I first want to talk about this word right here. We've been saying this word a lot at Slack recently. It's, be it's in the bloodstream of the system, right, in the, in the company right now. And I'm just curious, since I warmed you up a little bit, what does this word mean to you? Just throw up, throw up. Accountability, what does it mean? Ownership. Ownership. Great answer. Uh, what was that? Commitment. Commitment. Good answer. Reliability. Sorry, reliability. Were you, were you reliable? That's right. What was it? What? I know you. <laughs> Responsible. Thank you, Nono. Um, you're all wrong. <laughs> That's not what it means. Um, I was asking my team this, this exact same question, and we did the same thing. And someone said something, and I think this is what a lot of people hear when a manager or a leader says the word accountability. They means, if you don't do this, I'm going to chop your fingers off. <laughs> that's what they hear inside of it, and that's what it's being used as. This is not what the word means. Accountability is an amazing word when you look it up. And I looked it up. So this is the presentation that starts with the guy with the definition from the dictionary. <laughs> yeah, like every bad presentation ever. This is what it means. And this is the only thing in this entire deck that's super important for you to know. Accountability is being required or expected to justify actions and decisions. And when you think about it, account, to give account for a thing. This is what we're saying when we're talking about accountability, and it goes from my fingers being chopped off to having the ability to describe, to say, why did I do this thing? What was the reason that I built this thing? Why did we choose this feature? Why are we building this product? And that's a joyful word, but this is super hard. This is really hard in rapidly growing companies because there's all these people there. So I worked at this company down the street, a big, huge, spaceship thing. Um, and I learned a little bit about accountability there. I learned a lot about accountability there. But the thing about Apple 
which is a powerful lesson for me as an engineer, was there's no product managers. And y'all product managers, you're great. You're awesome. But they weren't there. So when you're walking around, you're having conversations about why we're doing and what we're, do what we're building, it, it, when it, it turned around. There was no, here's the business case. Here is the product spec. By the way, eight and a half years at Apple, didn't see a spec once. Not one. There was one. It was bad. <laughs> Anyway, so it didn't happen. So we had this situation. We had two, and again, engineering includes quality and all this sort of stuff. We had, two, um, we had two constituencies there. We had engineering and we had design. And these are the folks at the table who are deciding what we're going to build and how we're going to build it. And then we had another really powerful force, which is at Apple, it's called an EPM or uh, engineering program manager, TPM. These are the execution folks. This triangle, it really, in any company, you have these folks. You have these set of folks, the people who are building it, the people who are designing it, product manager folks, and the folks who are not just spinning the plates, but keeping all the, keep spinning the plates, but they know why plates exist. Engineering, and I know you know this, is the how. Build and grow the team. Align to a product strategy. Right engineer for the right job. Setting clear goals for the team. Building a strong, healthy team through actionable feedback. Product, the what and the why. Managing product strategy, getting the vision, go to market approach, articulating the business value. Voice of the customer. And setting clear goals for the team. And then, Program managers, the plate spinners, the when. By the way, if you don't have this person, all of this work is still happening. Someone else is doing it. Mapping interrelated, doing dependency matching, creating a logical progression of the work, bridging gaps between teams, partnering with cross-functional teams, uh, keeping the communication going, defining goals, metrics, and keeping us on a roadmap. So those are all probably very familiar things to you, whether you have these or not, this work is happening somewhere. But here is the thing about accountability and the challenges of growing the team is this part. These confusing uh, gray areas between the teams. Most of my career for the last 10 years, Palantir, uh, Pinterest, and Slack, I've been spending time in these gray areas because this is where there's miscommunication. Who is responsible for what? Who is the decision maker? Who has this responsibility or that responsibility? This is the biggest challenge that I have as a leader is making sure, not that the obvious responsibility are, are, are defined, it's the responsibilities between the two different teams or the three different teams. Who is responsible for a feature? Who is the person who is accountable for the feature? Is it the product team or is it an engineering team? Who builds the schedule? Who's responsible for the schedule? Is that engineering or is that the program management team? Who's responsible for talking about the feature in front of everyone? At Slack, we call it the Monday morning meeting. Who is the person who is the voice of the feature there? These gray areas are vast and they go on forever. Now, here's a problem with Keynote. I can't actually click to the next slide until this animation is done. <laughs> <laughs> and Keynote's lovely, but this is for effect, which is, look at all this stuff. And this is just me kind of late in the night kind of going, okay, what are all the things? Phew, you see the phew there? This is just the things I could think of, the roles and responsibilities I looked around at different teams. As you're growing, as you're building product teams, whether you have these folks or not, the roles and responsibilities, that list of endless list of things, is something that you need to clearly define. You need to have a clear contract. The way that it works is when it's small, I call the group the old guard. The old guard is that set of humans who show up and they're the reason that we're sitting here, they're the reason the business exists. By the way, the old guard has vast magical knowledge of how the company works, who's responsible for what. They, um, 
you can just go talk to them and they know everything. They are culture carriers. They, um, by the way, they don't like to write anything down ever, which is maddening. And they have disproportionate power in the company because they know all these things. They know how it works and everyone goes to them. And by, so people start to follow their lead. But here's the thing, they don't scale. They don't scale. You gotta have the new guard that shows up. The new guard is that set of humans that shows up they're just happy to be there. Old oh, guy did this thing and they're here and it's great. And they're trying to figure it out. How does this all fit together as we're adding more people, as we're creating a program management team, as we're adding a design team, whatever it is. And since the old guard's running the show, no one's written everything down. This, around 120 people, is Dunbar's number. It starts to get really super confusing. People are trying to figure out how it all works, how to get things, how does it work here? How does it work here at Slack, at Pinches, this morning? And they're asking questions. And the leaders do. What a good leader does at this time is the following. And this is your homework. This is your homework. You went down the list, you saw the big list there, I was watching the heads and all going, oh, that's the one right there. What I'd like you to do at some point after this moment is to write down by yourself, what are the key things I'm responsible for? What are the things I'm doing every single day? <clears throat> These are my responsibilities. And then for your peers, whether you're, whoever your peers are, program management, design, whatever it is there, and say, these are the ones that they're responsible for. You got it, you got that list, and you go over and you talk with Rob, you talk with Nonum, and you say, hey, by the way, you sit down with them and you say, do the same exercise and let's compare notes I guarantee you're going to have a revelation with this other person because there's going to be things that they're going to say, no, that's you. And they're going to be saying, no, that's you. You want to sit down and define a protocol for who is responsible for what. Don't go overboard. Don't do the, ransy, the long, loppy enlisting. Pick 10 things. Figure out who is responsible for what and define the protocol. Sign the contract. Agree. I'm responsible for this. I'm accountable for this. And you're responsible for that, you're accountable for that. The reason, the reason I love this word is because when I, when I think of the definition that I share with you, the ability to explain your reasoning and your actions is it's empowering to be able to understand why we're doing this thing and to have the data to say, this is why we chose this path. And it's not about getting your fingers cut off. The other thing about it is that triangle there, the only way you get this is you have really clearly defined relationship with the other parties. And I think a lot of folks come into companies and they think, hmm, they got it all figured out. Let's go figure it out. They got it all figured out. I'm just going to listen and figure it out. We usually don't. We usually don't actually have it. And taking the time to be deliberate about this is super important. I love this word. I keep on saying it to folks. They're getting really tired of hearing it. So that's the end, but I have another thing because I now have another minute and 30 seconds. This is super fast, I like this. Um, so thank you. Um, there, was a, um, there was a question that I was asked to put in here, so I'm gonna put it here, which is one of your, what's one great piece of a career or life advice that you've received? It has to do with my daughter, which means I'm gonna start crying. Um, <laughs> happens every time. So my daughter's name is Claire, and when she was young, I would take her to, I would take her to kindergarten. And, it was incredibly important to me that she understand the value of being on time. Because I, sorry mom, my mom was like perennially late. So I was a kid walking in 10 minutes late in like kindergarten, so you do not want to stand out. So this is deeply, like I had serious issues about this, right? So I'm driving to kindergarten with Claire, and I look over my, sho I look over my shoulder, I'm like, hey Claire, what are daddies? And she's like, oh, what's going on here? I'm like, daddies are never late. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds funny, you're laughing about it. <clears throat> and we did it every single time for like three or four years. My kids are adults now. Claire's a senior in high school. Spencer is, um, he's a uh, RIT in upstate New York. And if any of you were to go and ask them, what are daddies? They're gonna say, never late. <laughs> now, you're giggling about it. But the thing about it, I was just telling someone else about this earlier today, is there's something inside of there. There's a lot of leadership things in committing to something and meeting that commitment about being on time. So this is advice that I gave my daughter, but it was leadership advice I think everyone can benefit from. So 
Thank you very much. I'm right on time.